What is Monte Carlo simulation? How can it be used to solve poker, calculate the number pi and predict stock prices? Watch this video if you want answers to these questions. Consider an experiment with several possible outcomes where you want to estimate the probability of each outcome. In some cases, this is a straightforward combinatorial task, such as tossing a coin where the probabilities of heads and tails are both one half, assuming the coin is fair. However, if the experiment is more complex, like playing poker and estimating the probability of winning, the task becomes more intricate. This is where Monte Carlo simulation can help. The idea is extraordinarily simple. Simulate the experiment millions of times to obtain the distribution of results. For example, let's return to the poker game scenario. Suppose you have a pair of cards, A and B, and cards C, D and F are on the table. We can create millions of simulated games by removing cards A, B, C, D and F from the deck and randomly selecting cards for other players from the incomplete deck. Finally, we determine the winner of each simulated game. After running n such simulations, let's say you want m games. The probability of winning from a given position in poker is then calculated as m over n. The same way Monte Carlo simulation is used in many different disciplines, including engineering, finance, medicine, artificial intelligence and many others, especially to estimate risks. Sometimes we cannot obtain an analytical solution using mathematics, and the only available approach is a numerical solution. The Monte Carlo method can help us with this as well. Let's consider a square and place a circle inside it. The area of the square is 2 times r to the power of 2, where r is the radius of the circle. The area of the circle is pi times r squared. So the ratio of these two areas is pi over 4. But can this ratio be approximated using the Monte Carlo method? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Remember, you will need to simulate some process. The answer is that we can generate random points. Our experiment here involves generating a point and checking whether it falls inside the circle or not. It should be pretty intuitive that the resulting distribution will represent the ratio between the areas. The larger the area of the figure, the higher the probability that a point will land there. This leads us to the conclusion that this ratio equals m over n, similar to the poker example. Here, n is the total number of experiments we simulated, that is, the total number of points we generated, and m is the number of successful outcomes, or in other words, the number of points inside the circle. If you seek a rigorous proof that this equation is true, you would need to recall the law of large numbers for Bernoulli trials. The proof becomes straightforward once you consider the random variables xi k which are defined as follows. However, this proof requires some knowledge of probability theory. I hope that you now have a clear understanding of how it works. Let's implement the evaluation of pi in C++. While I usually write in Python on my channel, C++ is much faster. This is why it's widely used for approximation tasks, especially those involving complicated or repeated evaluations. Let's create a function that takes the number of simulations as a parameter. We'll need to count the number of points inside the circle. For this, we should declare a variable. Then, see the random number generator, which is a good practice. And now we can perform all the simulations in the for loop. On each iteration, I generate a random point and check if this point is inside the circle. I chose a circle with a radius equal to 1. After this for loop, as we discussed before, we can compute the number of pi, which I then return. I added main to call our function with the different numbers of points to generate. Let's compile this code and see how the approximation performs. The more points we generate, the more precise the approximation becomes. Imagine that we have a model that describes the behavior of stock prices. This model is stochastic, meaning it predicts prices with some randomness involved. How can we apply a Monte Carlo simulation in this context? Well, we can use this model to simulate many possible price paths and then average the results. In mathematical finance, such a model exists and is called geometric Brownian motion. You can find an implementation Python on the Wikipedia page. It specifies parameters such as volatility, initial price, time period and drift. By running this code multiple times, you can observe possible paths of the stock price and average the results. 
This encapsulates the essence of Monte Carlo simulation. I hope this video was useful. If so, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Take care.